A very interesting part of Has Been Hotel is the fact that we never actually see Alistair stop smiling. He's never been seen without his smile. However, Alistair says that just because someone is smiling does not mean they are actually happy, which raises questions. Has Alistair ever actually smiled? Is it possible he has never had a genuine smile in his life, and if so, who taught him to smile this way? My name is Deep Cut, demons call me Imp Cut, and let's discuss the history of Alistair and his creepy smile. Now, Alistair is an interesting character, being an overlord who has power, but it is said that he does not seek power the way that other overlords do. Every other overlord we meet seems to be a titan of industry, whether Vox with his TV or Rosie with her matchmaking service. Alistair, on the other hand, does appear to control the radio, but he hasn't used it as an industry to bring in money. Instead, he seems to see the radio as his own private platform where he just talks on and on about whatever he desires and, in between, plays some older music. Alistair has no interest, it would seem, in monetizing the radio even in the forms that he likes, and has outright refused to work with Vox, who likes to modernize concepts and basically wants to turn Alistair into a podcast. Before the show, I would have argued that most, if not all of the overlords, are sociopaths and narcissists, but as we got into season 1, we saw there were really some grounded emotional characters among them, such as Carmilla and Zestiel, just as we saw more empathetic rulers in Hell of a Boss like Osmodius. Alistair, interestingly, becomes one of the most evil characters on the show, perhaps still not as bad as Vox, Valentino, and Velvet, but he seems wrapped up in their games more than the other overlords because he has a similar sense of narcissism to them. Some narcissists are grandiose, not meaning they are big and important, but more so that they have a delusion that they are big and important. This is more the behavior we see with the early Serpentius, someone who is desperate to be an overlord because he wants the world to adore him, but who can't see how far away he is from that kind of respect. Alistair, on the other hand, is a more vulnerable narcissist, I would say. Alistair, unlike Serpentius, doesn't just erase memories that are upsetting to him, and instead, he may have very few memories that aren't upsetting to him, choosing to hold on to the things that scare him as opposed to the things that make him feel great. He does talk fondly of certain things like his mother, but outside of that, we only get indications that his smile is not real. Alistair's favorite line is, You're never really dressed without a smile, which at first gives the impression that Alistair wants to be happy and wants everyone around him to be happy. For someone who desires happiness, you would want to imagine that this line means that you need to dress yourself with happiness before you are really complete. But for Alistair, it's implied to be less about how you feel and more about how you hide your actual feelings. According to this tweet from Vivzipop, it's about ego and dominance. Alistair's smile is one that demons have a hard time reading and understanding. It is something that has made him unpredictable, or rather, something that makes him feel unpredictable, even if he only ever does the most predictable thing. Without a smile, Alistair may be seen as doing the absolute obvious thing every single time. I imagine if Alistair had not smiled once in meeting Charlie and eventually asking her for a favor, that Charlie would have not shaken his hand. It is in this scene with Charlie that Alistair explains that his smile is just a valuable tool, something that keeps people guessing and hides what is underneath. Without this, people would probably see Alistair as always reaching for the most obvious tactic, whether physical or psychological. With the smile, however, it throws enough doubt that the most obvious motive becomes the hardest to see. It keeps you guessing about it too much to just feel certain. This is a great tactic for Alistair in particular, who has used it to get to the point of being a popular radio host in his earthly life, hiding all of his serial killings along the way, and then having more power than any average person walking into hell. While others may get their power from their appointed industries, Alistair seems to have always just confidently smiled his way through different deals and gambles, tricking even some of the greatest gamblers like Husk, it would seem. The point is, Alistair used his smile in such a way that it makes me wonder if he has ever actually smiled at all, if there has ever been a moment that brought him true joy and made him smile with happiness instead of to hide his true emotions. Throughout the first season, I'd easily assume his smile was genuine, even after he insists that it's used to hide his real emotions to Charlie. But at the very end of the season, we see Alistair begin to crack after Adam manages to get the upper hand in their battle. 
Alistair's smile persists, but it's not the kind that has any confidence behind it. For a minute, he looks like a foolish man who is embarrassed more than anything else. And for the first time in the show, his smile seems to truly express his motions underneath it, despite the fact that it's meant to hide it. This goes a layer deeper when Alistair is alone, where he still refuses to drop his smile, but we can continue to see his true emotions. Under his smile is nothing but fear, anger, and disgust with himself for almost losing. When he complains about the deal he is trapped in, he looks like the stress is about to break him. What Vivzipop notes in her tweet is that Alistair likes control more than anything else, and self-control is an important part of that. The smile is in many ways less about controlling others and more about controlling himself, stopping himself from having meltdowns and temper tantrums that he sees others having. In these final moments of season 1, where he's singing about escaping his deal, I think we are seeing the true emotions of Alistair, the ones he is feeling almost all of the time. I think underneath his crazy smiles, Alistair is just a man who fears everything. He needs to smile because it's the only way to hide the fact that everywhere he goes, he is terrified, even when he seems to be the most powerful person in the room. Alistair is the kind of person who doesn't want power the way other overlords do in order to actually lord it over the others, but rather he wants it in order to feel safe. And the only way to feel safe in a world that is terrifying is to become that most powerful person in the room, a person with a million backdoor exit strategies. Alistair is interesting for being so seemingly unfazed by others, but also disappearing for about seven years after his battle with Fox. This, like everything else Alistair has done, seems to be a calculated act to hide how scared he is of everyone else, needing seven years to be away from everyone just to make sure he's really safe again. Whether he has a lot of power or no power, people don't actually know, and the limits of his power are just too mysterious because he hides it all behind his smile. The real question becomes, how did Alistair learn to conduct himself in this way with his smiles, or rather, who taught him this? The likely answer would be his mother from his life on Earth. Alistair speaks fondly of his mother, especially about her jambalaya, and seems to have modeled a lot of his worldview around her. Alistair was noted early on as seeing men as just a list of their failures. While asexual, Alistair was noted as not really being aware of this within the show, something Rosie plays with in her episode. In his mind, he was described in early live streams as just wanting to find the right girl to come along that he could settle down with. This makes sense considering how he sees women as a whole, which is rather fondly. He sees women as charming and interesting, and people who should be left out of the more male conflicts unless they put themselves in the middle of it. Growing up, Alistair had his mother and not a father, so all he really had to go off of was the nature of his mother for women, and his own sociopathic feelings inside of him that wanted to murder for men. Alistair would go on to be a serial killer, but one who only went after other bad people, seeing men as these active agents in a very dark world, with women being the ones who have to be protected from them. His mother is implied to be a very caring woman who Alistair still loves dearly, and it would make sense that she was the one that taught him to smile like this. As a child, Alistair perhaps didn't smile at all, living a hard life with a single mother, trying to take care of him in a world where he probably didn't feel safe. Despite their hardships, I imagine her as always having a smile, and perhaps insisting to Alistair that he is never really dressed without one either. This wouldn't be something he'd hate hearing, at least in the end, because he does love his mother. She wouldn't want him to frown, and he would put on the smile every time she asked him to in order to appease her. This would make her happy, and though it may not have made him happy, it would hide his true feelings and allow his mother to act as if she is happy, even if her smile was fake as well. It would teach Alistair the power of a smile on how it could hide your feelings to get what you want, which in the case of his mother was just for her to have some peace. But like with Alistair, I imagine her smile to be fake too. She may have just made it through life with a fake smile, just like Alistair seems to be doing in Hell, always hiding her emotions, perhaps even her fear of her own son. But for more information on that, subscribe, as we'll undoubtedly do a video before Season 2 about the relationship of Alistair with his mother, as that's supposed to be a very key focus in the next season. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts and theories in the comments down below, and I'll see you later.